You speak uh, more about this with Mia Milan, who's editor of Begi Caesar. Mi Mi Mia, very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. So the minister announcing that not only have they added additional age groups to the vaccination rollout, but they've also spoken to Treasury about funding for human capital in order to expand the vaccinations to the weekend. So clearly very good news for those who've been lamenting the slow pace. Yes, our weekend vaccination figures have been really low up until now and the barriers to um, getting them to increase has largely been for provinces to be able to afford to pay staff to work overtime and to also um, have additional staff that they can find to help to vaccinate over weekends. So the Treasury additional allocation adica of a budget is helping with that and there will also be medical students and nursing students who will be incorporated over weekends weekends to help with vaccinations and that will definitely help us to increase our vaccination numbers over weekends but also the total number of vaccinations that we do. So if we look at the past week there has been a significant increase in numbers. Yesterday we did about 190,000 vaccinations for the day. If we compare that to about two weeks ago it was less than half of that and the aim is now to increase to 250,000 vaccinations per day by the end of next week and by the end of August the aim is to have 300,000 vaccinations per day. Okay so um, how much can we trust the registration for this new cohort and when the rollout will begin and not to engender any pessimism but we know that we have experienced delays so much of our, our own doing and some not. So if we, all we can really do is to, to look at what has happened up until now with registrations. And for the 50 plus groups, so the people between 50 and 59, by yesterday, just under a million of them had registered in a relatively short period. With the people of 60 and older, it's been more challenging. They generally have less access to internet or um, data on phones to do that. But I think what will help us is that, for instance, in Gauteng, all public sites are now open for walk-ins, and many of those sites will help you to register when you get there. So if you're not able to register before, you can turn up at a site. It's preferred to register before but there will be some capacity to help you to register there. The same at private sites. People without medical aid can now do walk-ins at private sites as well. That changed last week. So they are able to, if you have no medical aid, you can go to the closest site and you can just turn up and be vaccinated. Of course, it's preferred that you be booked so that there's planning allowed for the number of doses that they are at a site, but it is also possible to walk in. You may wait a little bit later. So when it comes to registering for the younger group, people who are younger generally have more access to internet and it's quite easy to register on the EBDS. So we would expect probably to see more, a higher number of those people registering than the older 60 plus age groups, just because they have more access to the technology to register. Okay. So Mia, the minister also confirming that the Chinese Coronavac vaccine had received regulatory approval in South Africa. What do we know about it? So with regards to South Africa, we know that SAPRA has approved it. It's our regulator for use, but we also know that no procurement has yet happened from the health department side. Our ministerial advisory committee would first need to advise the health department on procurement, although the health department has reacted relatively positively to the approval. So what do we know about the um, coronavirus? Um, vaccine. We know that in Brazil, there was a large study among healthcare workers that showed us that the, the efficacy of the vaccine is about 51% in preventing all forms of COVID of all kinds of um, severity. We also know that there has been news reports in country like countries like Indonesia, where, for instance, doctors have received the vaccine and some of them still ended up in hospital. And there's also been reports of some deaths. But that's not a study. That's news reports. What we really need to know in South Africa is how effective is the Corona vac um, vaccine against the Delta variant that's now become dominant here. Now, we have not yet seen data for that. SAPRA has not released data. The health department has not made announcements. That is 
the crucial bit that we need right now, because if it doesn't work well against the Delta variant, then there's no sense mm. in getting it. But the company has said, the local company that works with them, that they have some laboratory data that shows it is effective or does work to some extent against the Delta variant. We just don't know what that data is. Yet. Right. So, Mia, we obviously aren't talking about vaccination in a vacuum. Um, if you could just remind our viewers the figures for COVID-19 at the moment in the last 24 hours and also while Gauteng continues to be at the epicenter of this third wave I believe the acting minister has said that it could start stabilizing the numbers for that and appears that uh, the country is uh, reaching its peak but the, uh, the, the third wave could reach other provinces. Yes, so where we're at at the moment is Gauteng is in the process of reaching its peak, particularly in the area of the city of Johannesburg. But that's the peak for the number of new cases. We don't, haven't yet seen the peak, um, and we're not close to be about two or three weeks away from the peak for hospitalizations, because it takes time, two to three weeks, to end up in hospital from the time of infection. So what we're going to see in, in Gauteng in the next two or three weeks is a very, very much strain on the healthcare system. We're going to see many more hospitalizations because that's going to be the hospitalizations of the infections that happened okay. a week or so ago. So, Mia, we have run out of time, but if you can, very, very briefly, please. So, the health department is making submissions on lockdown in South Africa, whether we should adjust uh, the level four lockdown as in lower or whether we should extend the restrictions. What do you think is likely to happen? I think we're going to need a lot of hospital beds in the coming weeks in South Africa. And we know that the one measure that works for that to open up hospital beds for COVID is alcohol sales restrictions. So we could possibly see an extension of that. We also heard this morning from the health department that the Delta variant is now spreading the fastest in the Limpopo province and also Mpumalanga. And if we want to prevent or slow down new cases as much as we can, we might, we have to use the tools that we have to do right. that. And the only tools we have is these measures. All right. Thank you so much for speaking to us, uh, Mia Malan, editor of Begisisa Center for Health uh, Journalism. Unfortunately, some bad news uh, being predicted there. Not only Mia is saying that, there are other experts who are saying if we want to get a proper handle on the situation, if Gauteng is peaking in terms of its numbers of new COVID infections, as she was saying, the reality is that the third wave is going to move in on other provinces. She mentioned Mpumalanga and Limpopo. There's the Western Cape as well, which has been said could possibly uh, see increasing numbers. Uh, the Delta variant of the COVID-19 virus said to be, of course, uh, uh, more easily transmissible. So uh, behave or face uh, the big stick of uh, tighter restrictions as has always been the warning to us.